Welcome to the Rubik's and Robotics STEM course. Throughout this video, we're going to be walking you through how this Rubik's Cube Mosaic robot works and the design process behind it. Hopefully after this video, you'll become true engineers just like us. So the first step in our process was actually the prototyping phase. So before we could get to this monstrosity, we have to do a little bit of planning first. So I know we tried to sandwich the cube in between wheels to try and turn it that way. I know we're trying to stick a bunch of nails or screws in between and try to turn it that way. And in the end, both of those methods failed miserably. And if we had done no planning beforehand, we would have absolutely no idea what we're doing. Next, we actually came up with a solution to turn the cube. We used these little pieces that we made ourselves. They'd be attached to the axle that is attached to the motor, and then it would turn the cube. And these are actually 3D printed. We use something called CAD, or Computer Aided Design, to design these parts. We call these pizza tables, because during our first iteration, they actually look like pizza tables. We constantly improved these pizza tables, making really small tweaks that made a big difference. Like, we changed the size of the piece and the size to create the perfect pizza table. Oh, that's heat. Next is our frame. On a real robot, this is called the chassis. It's kind of like the backbone of the robot. It holds all of your batteries, all of your special motors, and anything else you need that's really essential to the robot. So the chassis is usually made out of something really hard, like aluminum, metal, I know a lot of people use wood. But on our robot, we decided to use the $2,000 aluminum composite. Uh, I'm just joking, we, we, we just use Lego. <laughs> Whoa, don't leave the video yet. Lego is still a big W, and let me tell you why. So Lego, you can easily put it together, easily take it apart, and that's why it's so good for this robot. You can easily maintain it. All you need to do is snap it off. You can make new changes. You can change things to the motors or make it really stylish. And next are our motors. So we use four of these blue and white motors that anyone can use. And if you get a closer look, we have the circle. We can attach anything to the circle. And when the motor moves, whatever's attached to it also moves. And finally, we have the brick. So the brick is kind of like the brain of the robot. It contains all the programming. As you can see, it contains all the wiring. And with the brick, you can hook up some programming to any device. You can use your phone, your PC, a laptop, a tablet, like your thermometer. Don't, don't quote me on that last one. But yeah, the brick is really powerful and it is what keeps this robot running. We go through the process of uploading the image that we want, and for this, we would want to use our own logo. We have a 10x10 10 10 square of cubes, and now we will just have to create the mosaic. Next, we go to another website and import the image that we just got, and it will give us the algorithms for it. We can then just copy and paste this text and go to another program that will give us the code for the robot. Using the Spike Prime software, we were able to create a complex program to be able to tell the robot the moves. First, let's start off with the variables of this program, which are count and string. We use the count variable to track the position of the string and the string variable that contains the moves that the robot will do. Next, let's define our functions. There are two main functions in this program, one for turning the cube and one for telling the robot the moves to make. In this function, we use a my block to make our program readable and not as janky. To put this function into simple terms, you would put the motor that you want to turn and how many degrees you want it to turn. The other function is simple. It means that when you press this right button, it would do the moves on the robot. This program also uses a lot of if-else statements. If-else statements are statements that check a true or false statement and completes the action that fits the case. Look at all these if statements. This next method tells the motors of the robot how far to turn and will tell the center of the spike prime hub the color of the cube that the top should be facing. 